Hello, maths fans. Uh, we're looking at annuities today. What are annuities? Uh, well, they are basically a series of payments made at equal intervals. So basically, you can either pay a set amount of money into an account uh, every month, for example, or every year, uh, or you might withdraw a certain amount uh, from an account every year. Um, so, for example, I might invest $200,000 into an annuity so that I get paid a set amount every month after I retire. Uh, that might be for a set number of years until it runs out. Or well, there is actually uh, other types of annuity that just pay out until you die, basically. Uh, in effect, what an annuity is, is the reverse of a personal loan. So if we've looked at uh, amortization, paying back, back of loans, uh, annuities are basically kind of the, the opposite of that because uh, you put the money into the bank and then you're getting a payment back rather than uh, uh, a loan where you take the big money in the, at the start and slowly pay it back. Um, as the balance of your annuity decreases, so does the interest it earns, but you will still get the same regular payments. So you, you usually set an amount that you want to receive every month. Uh, they're most commonly used as a source of regular income for people who've retired. Uh, kind of goes hand in hand with pensions. Um, and money saved during their working life is then pushed into an annuity fund so that they get a regular income uh, when they are no longer working. So that's kind of what annuities are. It's just a series of regular payments. It could be a series of regular payments into that account, or it could be a series of regular pa payments to you, usually after you've retired. Um, for this, we're going to need the compound interest uh, function on your calculators, your graphical display calculators, uh, the time value of money stuff. Uh, so let's just recap what all those things on there mean. N on your calculator is number of payment periods. I percentage is the, is the interest rate. PV is the present value. PMT is the payment amount. That comes up a lot in this. We are payment. Uh, we're giving ourselves a payment every month. Then we've got the future value, uh, payments per year, and compounding periods per year. These two are not necessarily going to be the same. You may get uh, that it's compounded monthly, but you're paying once a year, for example, or it's compounded yearly and you're paying once a month. So just be a bit careful. That can be different, uh, whereas a lot of examples we've done, these are always the same. And I think in the two examples I'm going to go through today, they will also be the same. Now, when performing calculations with annuities, you should recognize that the person depositing, uh, if it's a, a, a single amount going into an account, that's going to be negative. Always think about, um, if it's going from my pocket, I can't spend it because I've put it in to the bank, then that's negative. It's negative away from my uh, pocket. If it's the payment going into my pocket, that's positive. Okay, so payment is positive. Uh, and usually uh, the present value here is going to be negative. But there are some twists to that as well. Carrying on, let's go through an example. So I want to, uh, Heather has just re retired at age 65. She has $900,000 in her savings fund. She rose, rolls that into an annuity fund that's uh, got 4% interest per annum, compounded monthly. Okay. If she withdraws 5,400 per month, how long will it take for the money to run out? So what we're looking at here, let's just see where we're getting this information from. Uh, N, the number of payment periods. Uh, well, that is what we're finding out because we're seeing how long it takes for this to run out. The percentage, that's pretty straightforward, 4%. The principal value, 900,000, it's in the bank, so it's negative. Okay, that's going to be a negative 900,000. Uh, the payment, 5,400. The future value, we want to know when it re reaches zero. Uh, payments per year is going to be monthly, so that'll be 12. Compounding periods, it's compounded monthly, so that'll also be 12. Let's just put that information there. So there is all the information I'm going to put into my graphical display calculator. Uh, 
just to try and show you that on the financial one. So we're going to go over to financial and we're going to go to compound interest, which is F2 there, compound interest. And then you're going to put all of this information in. N is what we're looking for. So we'll make that zero, et cetera, et cetera. And when I do that, you should find that you uh, have it looking like that. Just be careful there. Present value is negative. It's gone from the person currently in the bank account can't touch it. The payment, that's what's going in the pocket. Uh, and when we type that in, uh, we should find that we get, let's do it on the calculator now. So we've got zero and four and negative 900,000 and five, 400 and 12 and 12. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for N, so I'm going to go F1 and it says 243.68, 243.68. So it takes that many months for the payments to run out. If I want to change that into years, obviously I could go uh, 243 divided by 12, and we get uh, 20, uh, years and a quarter, 20 years and 0.25 of a year, which is three months. So 20 years, three months. Uh, part B then, if Heather wants the money to last until she is 90 years old, how much can she afford to withdraw each month? So we're ignoring this now. So that is what we are trying to work out. That's what we are looking for. Uh, and the N now is she wants it to last till she's 90 years old. So if she's 65 now, from 65 up to 90, that's 25 years monthly. Make sure you remember we're dealing with months. So we're going to put that information in. So let's grab our calculator again, and we're going to go back to our financial, and we'll change N to 25 times 12, and your calculator will do that for you, change it to 300, and then we've got the present value is still the same, payment is what we're looking for, so let's do that. PMT, here we go, uh, 4750. Point five three. Usually two decimal places with money, unless it tells you otherwise. So uh, that is how much money she would be able to withdraw if she wanted it to last 25 years. Okay, let's have a look at another example. And this example, I've tried to mix in uh, a lot of things that will just little twists that make this a harder question. So this is kind of about as hard a question as, as, as you would get on annuities here. So, Charles plans to invest in a retirement plan for 30 years. He's paying into this uh, annuity for 30 years. He's depositing a thousand pounds at the beginning of each month. Now, this beginning or end of each month does change the maths a little bit and it changes what we put in a calculator. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, he's receiving 6.5% interest. It's pretty good, compounded monthly. So let's find the future value of the investment after 30 years. So N is going to be, well, 30 years. Remember, it's in months, so 30 times 12. N is not the years. It is the, com uh, the uh, number of periods. So it's 360. Uh, then I, we've got present value is zero because he's paying into this account. Payments are going from him to the bank, so that's negative 1,000. The future value is what we're looking for. We want to know the future value of the investment after 30 years. Uh, payments per year, he's doing it monthly. Compounding periods, compounding monthly. So there we go. Now this is the bit that we need a little bit of new thing. If we take our calculator here, 
And on this compound interesting, if I scroll down, there's nothing left. But there is some more options. If I click Shift, and then above the menu, there's a Setup. When I go there, this payment can either be at the end of the month, or if I press F1, it can be at the beginning of the month. And that does make a huge difference. So knowing this setup part is there is very important. So I'll just show you that again. I'm going to go shift and then above menu is setup and then payment. I can change from end to beginning. Okay. Uh, then when I go back in here, let's put all of that information in. And in fact, I've done that in advance. So quicken it up. So put all that information in, put begin as the payment place and you get one million one hundred twelve thousand one hundred seventy pounds charles has got loads of money in the bank well done charles so that's part a that is uh, the future man value of the investment uh, to the nearest pound moving on to part b after the 30 years charles will start receiving regular monthly payments of £7,500 at the end of each month. So if he's receiving £7,500, he's doing very well for himself. He's got plenty of money and he can have a pretty good retirement here. Uh, how long in years and months will those payments last? Well, let's get that calculator out, stick the things in that we know. Uh, N, we're looking for how long, so how many periods, how many months. Uh, I, we've got 6.5. The present value, this million pounds is in the bank. So it's a negative. The negatives and the positive are an easy place to slip up. If it's in the bank, it's negative. If it's coming into your pocket, it's positive. So the payment that's coming into his uh, pocket is positive, 7,500. The future value there uh, is zero. We're, we're finding out when that money runs out, goes down to zero. It's monthly, both things are monthly, so there we go. And we go to set up payment and change it to end of the month because it says here, end of each month. So just be careful, if it says beginning, end, that's a very key part of the question. You'll get it wrong if you put the wrong thing in. Let's have a look what happens when I put all that information in. I come out with an answer of 300.94 for N. So I've pressed F1. To calculate n there you can see all these buttons down here calculate the different things so calculating n press f1 and the answer was 300.94 that's in months so we'll divide that by 12 and i think that's 25 years and a little bit and one sort of and a 0.94 uh, of a month extra so 25 years plus one month so I'll just write around there. So 25 years and one month. Okay, that's about as nasty an example because you've got annuity paying in, then you've got annuity withdrawing. Be very careful with the negatives here and here. Decide if the money is going from a pocket to a bank or from a bank to a pocket. Uh, and also be careful with those begin and ends. That can really make the, uh, the question pretty tricky. Okay, I'm going to put one more question up for you guys to have a try at. Uh, and I'm just going to say pause the video now and I'll just show you a mark scheme straight after in a second. So pause the video, have a read of that if you want to try one more. And I'll show you the answer now. Here we go. There it is. So after 25 years, 52,444.48 and part B, 14,944.48. There's the information. I'm not going to dwell on that because I've been uh, talking too long. Hopefully you can figure it out. Anyway, thanks for watching that. That was annuities.